A differential equation is any equation that contains a rate of change. So for example, look at number one right there. It says, find the general solution to the first order differential equation. It says dy dx is sine x plus 2. Which element there is the rate of change? Which element there represents the rate of change? Anybody know? Come on. There's, there's only three elements there. Which one is the rate of change? The dy dx. This is the rate of change. This is the rate of change of y with respect to x. That's the rate of change. It has a rate of change in it, so it's a differential equation. Okay, so it says find the general solution to the first order differential equation below. So what that's asking for is effectively for you to do what to this? If you're finding the solution to this, what are you trying to find? The integral of that. The integral of that, exactly. You're trying to find that is the derivative of what? That is the derivative of what? Just tell me what that is the derivative of. So what is y going to be? What is y going to be? Negative cosine x plus c. Oh, sorry, plus, sorry, plus 2x plus c, yes. Now, why is it negative? How do you know? How can you check that to see if it's correct? How can you check that to see if that's correct? Find the what? Well, we did that. We just took the antiderivative. So if we wanted to check it, what should we do? Take the derivative. What's the derivative of, what's the derivative of just cosine? Negative sine. So the negative negative sine comes out to be cosine. The derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of that constant goes to 0. So we're all set. So that is right there. That is the general solution. When they say general solution, it means all the solutions. That is all the solutions. Does that make sense? All the solutions. We don't have any sort of initial condition, so we can't tack this down. We can't tack this down. How many functions does this represent? How many functions does this represent right here? An infinite number because... Because c could be anything, any constant, right? So let's talk about this one right here. It's slightly different because the equation is different, but it also gives you an initial condition. There are two pieces there. Which one's the easier one to integrate? Part a or part b? Which one? Part b. Can someone integrate that for me and tell me what it is? What is the integral of that? It's just x cubed, right? So you have x cubed plus c. Can somebody tell me what the integral of 2 to the x is? You have to know what this is. Liv. Yes, it is 2 to the x over ln 2. Exactly. Because when you take the derivative of 2 to the x, you get ln 2, 2 to the x. You want that ln 2 to cancel, so you put ln 2 under it. So yes, we have y equals this. But what else do they give you? The initial, what's this called again? What do we call this? This is important. Initial condition. We call this initial condition. Really important. So they call it initial value problem, but initial condition is that. By giving an initial condition, it becomes an initial value problem. So you plug 0 in for what? What, is it, what do you plug 0 in for? For what? For x. And then 5 for what? Y. y. Uh, I'm trying to draw a y, and I can't at the moment. That's a y right there, a y. So we have 5 is equal to 2 to the 0 over ln 2 plus 0 what? cubed plus c. Well, what's 2 to the 0? Come on, you know what 2 to the 0 is. 1. So it's 1 over ln 2 plus c. So what does c equal? Come on, you can do it. There you go, 5 minus 1 over ln 2. So all you, even though that's not optimal, is that still just a number? Yeah, sure, where do you plug that in? 4. This is your c value. This right here is your c value right there. So you need to finish this. So you would say that y is equal to 2 to the x over ln2 plus x cubed plus what? 5, five minus, minus 1 over ln2. That would be your final answer right there. Absolutely. That would be it right there. How do you feel about that one? I mean, I know the number is kind of disgusting, but it could be a lot worse, right? <laughs> could be a lot worse. So this, this number got plugged in there, and then it turned into this right here. I saw people do this. They did the first derivative, which was great. I'm really happy with the first derivative. Y prime equaling 2e to the 2t. What's really going on is you're doing ln e times e to the 2t times the derivative of 2t. What is the derivative of 2t? What's the derivative of that? 2. And this is what? 1. So what did you end up with? Y prime is equal to 2e to the 2t. So you do the derivative again, and all that pops out is another 2. So you get 2 times 2e to the 2t, which is what? 4e to the 2t. But we know that this right here is equal to what? Y. y. And another way to write this is just different notation. There are lots of ways to write derivative. Sorry. 
There are lots of ways to write derivative. This will go away in one sec. There are lots of ways to write derivative. And the way that will help you see it is this is the second derivative equal or equals 4y, which means that the second derivative minus 4y is equal to 0. So was that a solution? No. This is a problem right there. That was the problem. So the answer is no, it's not. So you do all of that. It's perfect except for that minus sign. Perfect except for that minus sign. What variable do you want to use? Give me any variable. What do you want to use? Okay. What? G? G is good? Is G good? I heard G. So we're going to say the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity at time t is going to be equal to G. We have no idea what it is, correct? If we wanted to solve this, what is the acceleration due to gravity? We're trying to solve this, but we only know time it takes and distance. So what does this tell us? It says you drop a rock off a 100-foot cliff. So if you drop it off of a 100-foot cliff, what does that tell you? Does that tell you a velocity, acceleration, or a position? position. At time what? Zero. So its position at zero is 100. If the rock hits the ground after five seconds, so what does that also tell us? S of what? S of 5 is equal to? Zero. zero. No, S of 5 is equal to zero, meaning it's, no, it's okay, I understand. It went, I went to 100, I agree with you, but that it's where is it? If it, we say 100 is where it starts, zero is where it is. The basic idea here is we're going to have to, how many times are we going to have to integrate? Twice, because we're starting with acceleration, we're getting to position. position. So we integrate twice, meaning we need at least two pieces of information. This one's a little different. So here are the two pieces of information we have. This is where we're starting right here. Everybody get to the board. What do you know? So we got three of, we got two of the things we knew. This and, sorry, we got those two things, right? But there's one more thing. What do we know? We know that V of zero is, it wasn't thrown, right? It wasn't thrown down, it was dropped, right? So the, it, we're assuming that the velocity is zero. You need all three of those things. You have to be very careful in your integration. So when you integrate this, you know that V of t is going to be G of t plus c. One thing you will get used to, if I mean, this is what I did when I was in college. I would put like a little c1 right there just to say it's the first constant. So then when I integrate it again to get position, I ended up with, what is it, gt squared over 2 plus c1t plus c2. That's what I would do. I also e either would do c1 and c2 or alpha go one up alphabetically. So if I was C, I then use D. Just make sure you can tell them apart. What should you not do? They're not the same constant. Do you understand that? So now you have this right here. And how many variables do you have? You're trying to find G, and you also have C1 and C2. How many variables is that? That is three unknowns, right? So if you have three unknowns, generally speaking, how many equations do you need? How many pieces of information do you need to solve for three unknowns? You need three pieces of information. So when you plug this in, uh, the first thing you could do is use v of 0. So if you have v of 0 is 0, you know that 0 is equal to g times 0 plus c1. So what does that mean c1 is? 0. Plug it in up there, and you get s of t is equal to gt squared over 2 plus c2, because this goes to 0. So now you have two variables and two pieces of information. You know that v of zero, what, s of 0 is 100. s of 0 is 100. So zero, 100 equals 0 plus c2. So what does c2 equal? 100. You then plug it back in, and what do you get? You get s of t is equal to negative. What is it? Not negative. What is it? Tell me again. gt squared yeah. over 2 plus 100. Right? Mm -hmm. But what's that one last piece of information? We've used this one. We've used this one. So s of 5 is 0. So 0 is equal to g times 25 all over 2 plus 100. So you end up with negative 100 is equal to g times 25. Not negative. I keep on putting a negative there for some reason. g times 25 over 2. So you end up with g is equal to negative 100 times 2 over 25. So that's negative 8. And since it's acceleration, and we're talking about time in seconds and distance in feet, it's going to be negative 8 feet per second squared. Make sure you put the units in because that will be at least worth a point.